Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin Math TV. Today, we would like to share how to calculate the p-value for a test statistic that is conducted under the student's t-distribution. We can apply this method as long as the model of the calculator is designed with integration function. Consider the cumulative distribution function where we have to apply the regularized incomplete beta function. If let's say the test statistic is equal to 2 2.015 while the degree of freedom is equal to 5. Firstly, obtain the k value which is equal to the degree of freedom divided by square of test statistic plus degree of freedom. So let's press on the fraction button. Degree of freedom is 5. Move down and input the test statistic which is 2.015 and we need square plus the degree of freedom. Press equal obtain the value. We can store to a. We can label here a so that we can can recall it easily. With this k value, we can now evaluate the regularized incomplete beta function. Let's start with the numerator, which is this function. Use the integration function. Follow the function, we have x to the power of a minus 1. a is this term, which is degree of freedom divided by 2. So we have 2.5. So input 2.5 and we need minus 1. Write and make a bracket followed by 1 minus x. Close bracket and make a power followed by b minus 1. b is this term which is always equal to 1 over 2 or simply 0 0.5 and we need minus 1. Write and write Go to the lower limit which is fixed and always equal to 0. Write again and we need the key value which we have stored to A. So press on alphabet A. Press on equal and we should obtain the value. Now store this value to B. And we can now proceed to the denominator part which is this function. Note that if the value here is an integer then we can apply this formula. Otherwise we should apply this formula. With the A value value that is 2.5 which is not an integer so we have to apply this formula firstly remove 0 0.5 from this value and we left 2 in other words the n is equal to 2 for this case so let's follow the formula make a fraction we have 2 times 2 is equal to 4 and we need factorial which is shift inverse down followed by 4 to the power of n so we have 4 square and we times n factorial that is 2 factorial, right? And we multiply square root of pi. Press on the shift exponent to get pi. Press on equal, obtain the value. Now store it to C. Then we have gamma B. B is not an integer as well and is equal to 1 over 2. And our difference is equal to 1 over 2 plus 0. If n is equal to 0, it is simply square root of pi. So we have square root, shift exponent to get pi, press equal, obtain the value. Now store to D. Then move to the denominator part, which is gamma A plus B. 2.5 plus 0 0.5 is equal to 3, which is an integer. Let's apply this formula. So we have 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. 2 factorial equal to 2. With all these values that we calculated, we can now substitute to this regularized incomplete beta function. So we should have fraction, the numerator, that is this value value which we store to b. Move down, we have this function which is another fraction. So press on fraction button and we need gamma a that is this value that we store to c. Multiply gamma b that is this value that we store to d. Move down and we have gamma a plus b which is this value. So we have 2. Press equal and we should obtain this term. Lastly is to obtain the cumulative distribution function which is y minus 1 over 2 times this value so we have 1 minus 1 over 2 right and we times the answer press equal and we should obtain the cumulative value and lastly is to obtain the p value since t is positive so which means that we need a right to test so we have to take 1 minus the value and obtain the p value which is equal to 0 0.05 rounded to the nearest two decimal places if this is for two Two, two tests we have to double this value we have tried for positive test statistic let's try one for negative 
test statistic that is a left tail test let's reset the calculator similarly also start with the k value so make a fraction we have degree of freedom 8 for this case down the test statistic is negative 1.5 but then refer to the formula since always take square which means that the negative is not important we can input as positive 1.5 with a square and we plus the degree of freedom 8 press equal now store to a next is to determine the numerator of the regularized incomplete beta function so we have integrate also x to the power of a a for this case is 4 so we have 4 minus 1 right make a bracket 1 minus x close bracket and make a power again b is fixed which is always equal to 0 0.5 and we need minus 1 right and right the lower limit is always 0 right again for the k value that we store to a press equal obtain the value now store to b let's move to the denominator part firstly we have gamma a since a is an integer which means that we can apply this formula we have 3 factorial that is equal to 6 next move on to gamma b again and equal to 0 which means that we have square of pi so square of shift exponent to get pi press equal obtain the value now store to c lastly for the denominator part we have gamma a plus b which is 4 plus 1 over 2 in other words n is equal to 4 so let's substitute into this formula make a fraction with 2 times 4 equal to 8 shift inverse to get factorial down 4 to the power of 4 right times 4 shift inverse to get factorial right square of shift exponent to get pi press equal obtain the value now let's store this value to d with all this value let's substitute into this regularized incomplete beta function so let's press on the fraction button firstly the numerator that is alphabet b move down make another fraction we have 6 times c divided by d press equal and lastly is to take 1 minus 1 over 2 times the value that we obtain press equal obtain the cumulative value note that since this is always square which means that this function did not consider whether the test statistics is positive or negative in other words this function will always compare the value that is from negative infinity up to a point on the positive side so which means that we have to always take one minus to obtain the p value this is because we know that the student's t distribution is always symmetric which means that to obtain the left tail is equivalent to obtain the right tail so let's take one minus the answer and obtain the correct p value also if this is a two-tier test, we have to double the value. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. See you.